Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell. Welcome to a new video and welcome to Moscow. Now I've got a few flags flying behind me. I'm sure you know that I've come to a shopping centre. Probably the title and thumbnail gives it away. Thought I'd take you a walk around a Russian typical Swedish owned shopping centre. Thought we'd check out what it feels like, what the shops are open and just the overall mood of the place. So let's go check it out. Before we walk on inside, I thought I'd give you just a little bit of background of why I've chosen this shopping center and why there's only two flags flying. Now, I just mentioned in the introduction that this is Swedish owned. Now, I've actually made a video on the channel which is the most popular video on the Traveling with Russell channel. And when I did that video about this shopping center, there was the third flag flying, which was the Swedish flag. It seems to be not here anymore. We know the place is still Swedish owned, but they've removed the flag. There's a couple of other interesting points about this outdoor area of the shopping center. So just off in the very distance is Ashan, which is a French hypermarket. These particular hypermarkets are all over Russia. And of course, this one is linked together with the shopping center. And this is the open air car park on one side of the shopping center. It does have underground parking under the entire building. And what's interesting is just off in the distance, you can kind of make it out here. There's this kind of paneling. Now there's two levels underground and one level above ground. They've built additional parking and they started this two years ago and it's due for completion this year, sometime in the next month or two. And the idea with the additional parking was for the IKEA that is no longer open. The colors are still painted on the building. Only thing that's different is the sign is missing. Anywhere in Russia where there's construction going on, there's generally a poster somewhere telling you all the information, any of the phone numbers if you want to contact them. And the actual owner of the shopping center is Inca Group, or Inca Centers. And that's actually IKEA in Sweden. And this is the actual photo of what it's meant to look like. This is the whole parking area here that they're building with this upstairs area and gardens and above and below ground parking. That's the ash on there. This is the shopping center in the middle. And there's the IKEA signage on the building. But of course this poster we didn't put up a while ago. And at the point when it's completed, the overall shopping center is gonna be 101,000 square meters. And at some point in 2023, it'll be completed. So they built this huge car park and nobody's coming to the shopping center. I've lived in Russia for just about 10 years since the first time that I came here. And my wife and I, even before we were married, we came to this place a lot because of Ikea, because of Ashan. There's a nice food court here as well. And when we came back then, we couldn't even find a parking spot anywhere outside, anywhere underground. You had to circle for 10 or 15 minutes sometimes. Sometimes I'd send my wife in, I'd park up and meet her because there was that many people coming to this shopping center. And now that it's lost its, one of its anchor tenants and some of the other main uh, stores here, there's definitely a different feeling to the place. Walking inside, they've got this really fun sticker here that says, if you bring your dog, it can only be 35 centimeters in height. And that's the guide there. If you're bringing your dog into the store, it can only be this tall. So let's walk in and have a look around. The sun is beaming through the ceiling. Check that out. It's so nice today outside. It's beautiful weather here in Moscow. I'm trying to hang on to this summer weather as long as I can in Moscow and make the use of my shorts for a couple more weeks until it starts cooling down. That's why even today I don't even have a jacket on, just a polo shirt. So I'm gonna take you for a walk around uh, as much of the shopping center as I can and point out some of the changes of store names and just how it feels. It's a very big, spacious shopping center, this. So it always looks quieter than it really is because it's so spacious. I just noticed, now I did walk around briefly before starting the video, but I didn't walk down this alleyway here that Tommy Hilfiger 
is now open, but it's called TH Legend. That's super interesting. I've been to lots of shopping centers recently, and this has to be the first one that is reopened. TH Legend. That's kind of interesting. Now, just as a point of reference, and if you do follow my other videos, in the description of the videos, I always put a link to where I am. So there's a Google Map link. There's also a website link for maybe the shop or the shopping center. And I also put a time of filming and recording. And today is Sunday afternoon. So Saturday and Sunday is the more popular days for people to come to the shopping centers in Russia and anywhere in the whole Russian Federation. And if this store doesn't look familiar, Sabu, perhaps the shoes inside might ring a bell. It's Crocs. And Crocs is definitely here, but they're now called Sabu. They've actually got even a video running right here. The entrance right in front of me here was the side of the shopping center where you'd come in through Ikea. So you could either come in from the street on the left or you could come through the entrance and exit of Ikea, which is the blue signage right there. And then this was actually all glass paneling and it had lots of displays for Ikea. Of course, it's not here, so they're no longer uh, showing anything. Now this on the right hand side was a couple of little small shops. And I know one of them in the middle was actually the pharmacy. So you can actually buy pharmacy items. There's a lot of shopping centers with pharmacies in them. Throughout Russia, it's very normal to have pharmacies in shopping centers. And I've actually got a map here showing you the layout of the shopping center and how to walk around. And they're saying there that one of the stores, Jean Symphony, is coming soon. And then this is generally the entrance that I always walk in, not necessarily through the main entrance. And we'll walk a little bit further. You can see it's a little bit quiet though. It's, this is my shopping center where I live, which is about an hour from here on a Saturday and Sunday is busy. We were actually there last night with my wife and it was really busy for Saturday evening as well. And where is everybody at this shopping center? And if you haven't heard about the changeover of ownership of the Zara stores, Dub is what used to be Bushka. And essentially when you look in the store, there is no change to the layout, to the look. There's, the only thing that's noticeable is the tag on the clothing and that coat hanger and a few posters here and there. And otherwise, Dub is or was Bershka. In this shopping center, the Levi's store used to be in this spot. You can tell the Levi's design from the outside with this paneling with the blue and wood paneling. There is quite a few other jeans stores in this shopping center. So possibly they didn't plan to rebrand this one as the JNS store. Now I'm not gonna go through every store in the shopping center. I'm just gonna cover a few of them because there is a lot just in this part that's changed. Kellebeck is actually a Turkish version of Ikea. Now it's not Ikea, we know that. It's a little bit of a simplified version. They're very well established in Turkey, this brand. And this is their first store in Russia. It's actually a really nice store walking around inside. Walking on a little bit further, none of the phone stores have changed whatsoever. These are all exactly how they were. Of course, I have a Samsung phone. So Samsung is the shop where I tend to go and look in and dream about the next thing I want to buy. And it's exactly how it was. There's also some other phone brands here. And then Nvidia is a very well established uh, homeware store, electronics store. It's a very nice place to come shopping. You can pretty much find anything you want homewares in there, fridges, anything white goods, any kind of phones, electronics, computers. Now this will be the last shop on this stretch and I'll try to walk on a little bit further and skip a few stores, but the ReStore is an authorized reseller of Apple products. Now, a lot of people mention that Apple's still for sale in Russia. Yes, it is, absolutely is. There was never Apple stores in Russia even to start with. 
So the restores are very, very popular. Now, I did walk in here a few minutes ago asking about the iPhone 15. And these guys were super nice. They were very helpful to explain to me about it. Now, worldwide, the iPhone 15 was released two calendar days ago from when I'm filming this. So in the front of the store here, there's iPhone 14 Pro, and then there's the tablets. I call them tablets. I think Apple users were going to crucify me for not calling it an iPad, but they don't have the 15 on display for a couple of important reasons. I actually went to a different uh, restore yesterday in my shopping center to ask about the same thing I came in here and asked. And in my local shopping center, the guys weren't particularly nice. And I think they spent the entire day answering questions. And this lady just walked in asking the same thing about the iPhone 15. And the guy is actually showing the website where you can order it online and then pick it up in the store. They don't have any phones to show you or the like, evidence that they've got them, but you can literally order it online and then pick it up in the store here. So it's only either through pre-orders or if you walk in after ordering it at home and you can buy it in the store. Coming inside the Nvidia store, it's super interesting if you're looking for Apple products because they don't have the build out any longer in the front of the store. There's actually a space over here where a little bit of it's missing as well. And if you want to buy Apple, there's just the sign there that says Apple. And then all the watches and phones and accessories are all right here. So Apple is more than available here in Russia and all the different phone cases and they're all there for you. At the entrance and exit of the store, they also have an Apple sign right here, which is an Apple partner or authorized reseller. Now, the difference between the ReStore, which is literally steps away from this, is you can pre-order the iPhone 15 here, but it won't be available till roughly the 10th of October. They're not sure on the exact date yet, but you can certainly pre-order it and prepay for it, and then they won't have it for another, or well, almost two weeks. Whereas the ReStore, you can pre-order and walk in and get one right now. I have talked about the shoe brands quite a lot in different videos and Sneaker Box is the Reebok store and there is nobody inside, literally nobody inside. I think the staff are either hiding away or they're busy behind the counters. And this was the laneway with all the shoe stores and this was the Adidas store which hasn't come to a decision what they want to do yet and what they're going to change it to. There's also the other part of the Adidas store here on the left. And then on the right here is where was Nike or Nike. And now it's Jeans Symphony. And perhaps that earlier sign was a little dotted lines to send you around here. And Nike is no longer here. And there's jeans for days. I'm not a very big jeans wearer myself. I'd wear shorts all year round if it was warm enough here in Moscow. Unfortunately, my Skechers store hasn't started re-sketching anything yet. And this is completely closed. The signage has been removed. And as I swing around a little bit, the one that's now trading, which was Puma, is called Amazing Red. And this is the Puma store. Very little changes when you look at the outside and inside of the store. Quite clearly everything on display is Puma branded products. With a lot of the shoe brands leaving Russia or saying they've left Russia, the one thing that's kind of important when you come to these sort of shopping centers is almost every brand of shoes or clothing had a standalone shop. And if I compare in Australia, we have a lot more of these multi-brand shoe stores. And these have sprung up everywhere in Russia now. This one is called Street Beats. 
and this is a multi-brand shoe store and it's got different clothing as well and they've got the brands uh, on the sign just off in the distance there and when you first walk in there's ladies on this side men's behind me but you can walk in and get a Reebok right here there's also New Balance Converse Puma and this is where people are coming to shop now to find the shoes that are not in the shops that were open that have now since closed the other sports store brands in Russia will also become very popular because of the fact that they have all of the different shoe brands, clothing brands. This is Sportmaster and these are in shopping centers all throughout Russia. And they're basically a supermarket with sporting goods in of any brand you want. They also have a very big home brand as well and a lot of the clothing, particularly here in the front, is their in-house brand. <laughs> and there's every brand you possibly need. Slowly the winter stuff's coming out as autumn kind of trickles into winter. I buy all my socks here. <laughs> there is never-ending socks for sale right at the entrance. And there's always a line at the register, no matter what time of day you come to this store. There's a queue at the register for paying. Now I am trying to get some people in the shots of the video. Uh, it is a huge place at the same time when you walk around, so people spread out very easily in this kind of shopping center. This is Trend Zone, which was New Balance, and still really is New Balance. And all of the stuff in here with the famous flashing lights that I can't do much to change, but they also have some other brands in here now, more than just New Balance. So another change where they go into multi-branded shoe stores. As I just walk out of the Trend Zone store, I just want to say the staff in there were very, very nice. Of course, this shopping center should be busy. There should be a lot of people in here and they really shouldn't have time to have a chat. Like when I walk in is have a chat. Um, but they were so nice and the guy is so honest about the situation with the changeover of the brand so thanks if you're watching i just noticed walking by on the right hand side here bootwood and this store was or still is timberland and all the staff there lots of staff in a small store that's bootwood and over on the left hand side here is the u.s polo association store which is called AR Fashion now. As I get a little bit closer to the center of the shopping center here. This is one of the main entries and exits from the shopping center. Right ahead of me is the cinemas. And then on the right hand side is now Stockman's. And this was actually the H&M store. And next door to it was H&M Home, the darker colored paneling right there. So there's now a Stockman home and Stockman's. Now it's actually a massive place. It's actually two stories. If you've obviously been into a H&M store, it'll make complete sense. And Stockman's has stepped in. Stockman's is actually a department store type of shop. So if you've ever been to one in Europe, you'll know what the feeling of it's like. It's multi-brand. It's a little bit more upmarket to some of the normal department stores that you might go to and lots of uh, middle and luxury brands that are available and tend to be set out by you know accessories shoes men's women's section and then the store next door which was H&M home is Stockman home and they've basically filled the two locations exactly how they were under H&M and Stockman's is here and they to reopen the stores they don't have to do virtually anything in terms of the fit out of the layout of the store it's completely as it was and they're very nice stores if you ever come to them especially if you're looking for something a little bit different from the normal hypermarkets and supermarkets and it looks like the guy that's in every one of my videos is busy looking for me but he's just a few minutes behind where I've just walked. 
in almost every video that I make in either a supermarket or a shopping center. The guy polishing and cleaning the floors, it seems to be <laughs> always <laughs> somewhere in the background. And I feel like it's the same guy, but I'm sure it's not. Hello, Autumn. I like how they've got a little display here and trying to get us in the mood for the change of seasons. And I think Stars Coffee has been very well documented on a lot of different YouTube channels and in the media. And the fact that it was Starbucks before and it's inside and outside, it's completely unchanged barring the one sign and maybe a couple of menu items. It's really how it was exactly. So we come to a little bit of a, a ladies aisle here with some of the ladies clothing stores. In the food court, Saboro is still here. Now I think this is mostly more well known to people in America. The pizza brand or chain that's in a lot of shopping centers, food courts, and I don't even see where the staff are, let alone customers to do shopping. Well, they've got pizzas on display there, and they've even got spaghetti and salad as well. I want to come for pizza, I don't want to come for spaghetti. Walking around a little bit further, Subway is still here. Oh, the guy is waving as well. Hello. Subway still available but instead of coca-cola now you're getting a dobro cola but the menu is still unchanged and walking around the corner from subway there is br and ice and i kept getting told off for saying baskin and robin wrong with the s without the s but the product is still here not sure why the sign's not lit up though I thought I'd come to this upstairs level of the food court just to show you how big it is and how expansive this place is. It's such a nice shopping center. It's just a bit of a shame there's not more customers. You know, for anybody that's worked in retail, you need customers to make money, right? And it only takes a few brands to leave the shopping center for the place to be much quieter than what it used to be. As I've been walking around, I'm trying to remember some of the stores that were here and now changed or they've removed the signage and not reopened. And this was Kiehl's. Now, I remember it very well because of this uh, black colored paneling and glass and the... <laughs> but I just couldn't for the life of me remember the name of the store that was here. Of course, right next door is Yves Rocher, which is here. And then Kiehl's is next to it. And I've given up trying to remember what this third one was. That's not open. So if anybody maybe shops here frequently, let me know the name of this store in this part of the shopping center. It's uh, especially, I used to come here so often and then I just stopped coming. And I sh go to my local shopping center more. So when you come back, it just sort of jogs your memory of what the stores were in these different locations. There's another uh, shoe store here with all the different multi-brands, Super Step. You can see as we go up the steps, that's a little bit of a, a lucky branding with the steps right in front of it. There's another couple of stores here that have opened. One's called Apricot. And this was where the Banana Republic store was. And they've changed this completely to how it looked. This is not even just a small change. And then here, where there is not a store, or there will be soon, was where was the Gap store. And there's a bit of a gap left, and perhaps Idol is coming soon. I'm not sure. It's really quiet walking around there. Look, you see there's my guy again on his floor washer. It must be the cleanest floors in all of Russia in this shopping center. The one thing that's super nice about this shopping center is all of these big glass windows. And I've shown this in quite a few other shopping centers as well, how they love to get these roofs in place. 
and then they are using virtually no lighting, especially during the day. And it just makes for a more brighter, happier place. I've been walking around for quite a while in the shopping center, and I think I've come across Massimo Dutti. This is actually exactly the store layout from the front of the shop. It's now called Sir, which is an interesting name, basically man or sir, and Massimo Dutti. Now there is different conflicting uh, press releases and stories about the brand and the name, but this is the best that I can do to find the store in the location it was in. And very interesting name of the store though, but everything from the outside and inside isn't changed. The store that we're looking at in front of us now is Snow Queen. And my wife just bought a jacket from this store, actually in another shopping center though. But I've stood outside this one many times before because this was the Uniglo store. And of course, it's no longer. But the store doesn't look too different inside. Of course, uh, the Snow Queen brand is uh, some men's clothing, but mostly ladies, but lots of very nice jackets and ladies' uh, clothing and super nice stuff in there too, particularly the one that we went to. The lady was so incredibly nice and just a different level of service when you went in the store. And they even upsold us and sold a matching scarf to go with the jacket. I think my wife was just in that kind of mood, you know? I think they would have sold her all the outfit if she had a chance. And this is just clothes. Now I have done another video on this separately on the channel, talking about the look of Uniglo and how similar it is now. This is in literally the store on the opposite side. And this location used to be Victoria's Secret. And they had a huge Victoria's Secret here on this kind of corner right here. And of course, it's no longer, but just clothes has filled the spot. And then the store that's not open here, in front of me here is what used to be Chanel. And it looks like they might have almost disappeared altogether. All the interior fit out's not there any longer, so it looks like Chanel is canceled. The one thing that Russian Shomhir centers do very successfully is group the stores together into themes. So this wing of the shopping center is all about kids and children, and there's even a hairdressers for kids. And then the shops all surrounding this area is different children's stores. So you can take them to a kind of an entirely separate wing of the shopping center. And there's actually a big climbing frame playground inside as well, just up ahead. And there's a lot of kids. This was one of the other entrances that I usually come in and out of. Up ahead on the left, the climbing frame that I was talking about, a pirate ship. I think it's a pirate ship anyway. Now tell me where you live in the world. Do the kids take their own shoes off before they go on the play equipment? I wonder if uh, it's happening everywhere in the world or is it just here in Russia that they do that? Even the adults take their shoes off as well. Such a polite thing to do. The one store I just want to show here is Mother Bear. Now this was trading as Mother Care before. Now it's not particularly busy and it's really quite empty actually. But Mother Bear, actually we've got one of these in the shopping center where I live as well. So they're all over Russia in most of the bigger shopping centers. And it's a clothing store specifically for kids. But it was a very famous brand in England back in the day. As I walk around, I seem to catch more of the cleaners in the video than I seem to be catching the shoppers. And they have a really cool thing in here where you can get water. And they've got filtered water right here from this device. Just press the button. Actually, I think they even do hot or cold water. Would you bring your own tea to the shopping center? Maybe coffee? I'm not sure, but as we continue walking around, the one store that I just noticed here is a German brand 
called Marco Opolo, and it's now called Scandinavian Studio. Now the store looks absolutely the same inside, but the sign outside changed slightly. Now, I've never shopped in this store personally, but I recognize the store from walking around. So what do you think? How Scandinavian is a German clothing store. Someone has to try to explain that to me, if you can. As I walk around, it's probably hard to tell from the backgrounds and foregrounds how many people are in here. I mean, there is different wings of the shopping center that feel very busy, and there is a lot of people around. And then the next wing that I walk down, there's virtually nobody. And it's just interesting, you know, watching the video from you know, a perspective of not being in Russia and not sort of following what's going on here. It's hard to kind of portray that in videos sometimes. I mean, should I wait for people to walk past and make the shot look busier? Should I wait till there's nobody? You know, I'm just trying to just do a general walk around aisle by aisle or lane by lane, showing what I see, which is what comes across hopefully in the video. I think by a long way, the main draw to come into this shopping center now is the big Ashan hypermarket. And that's just off in the distance. I always hope that my wife watches the videos and she tells me she watches them. So I'm gonna have to test her now and see if she watches the video because this is one of her favorite stores. And for close to two years, we've not been able to buy Swarovski in Russia. Also, when we went through the airport flying to Ufa, we went through there and saw the Swarovski uh, shop at the airport so we couldn't get anything, but it looks like they're back. Just make sure my wife isn't watching. But just as a test, if I know she mentions it to me and she tells me, Russell, we want to come to Mega Shopping Center. I know she wants to come to the Swarovski store. So as I try to find my way out of the shopping center at the opposite end to where I walked in, uh, this is the end of the video. I hope it's not gone too long. I'm not the best at trying to judge how long the video has come out. This is actually the Ashan hypermarket end of the shopping center. If you'd like to see a separate video of an Ashan, I can certainly do one. Let me know in the comments. Uh, the trolley guys wheel right by me. My bus stop is just here to make my way back home. I'm about an hour and a half from here. If I was to drive in a car, I could probably make it in an hour. Some pretty busy traffic right on the other side of the exit here called the Makad, which is 24 seven traffic, no matter what day of the week it is. Even today being Sunday afternoon. So I'm gonna make my way here to the bus stop and hang out and wait for my bus. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Let me know by giving a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Post a comment. I've given lots of things to talk about, I think, throughout the video gradually, so maybe something that you can post a comment about. If you'd like to see another video on the channel, one's gonna come up right here. Perhaps you wanna see another video, an older video on the channel that you've not seen before, you can click that link right now. And I'm off on another adventure. Bye, everybody.